I was talking with some people who've watched my past videos and I realized that a lot of what I know about Markdown, not everyone knows about Markdown. And so I thought it would be good to take a walkthrough of Markdown in Obsidian and especially some of the unique aspects of Obsidian Markdown to help people understand how they can use Markdown, how they can format their notes. And I also had the idea to do this in a bit of a different way where I will give you, and it's linked below in the description, a workbook page, a note, which you can import, you can copy the text or you can download it into your system so that you can practice doing these different markdown aspects uh, as we go along. So before we go through this exercise, I thought it would be good to explain markdown a bit and, and where it came about and why it's useful. So Markdown came about as a way to write um, information for web pages in a more friendly way. If I show you raw HTML here, this is what the sort of file that you might normally upload to a website and to see the information there. And it's not really easy to read what the actual content is when we look through these items here. So here's just the heading. We have H1 ID sample markdown and then we have the text here, sample markdown. And that's the only text for it here. Now there are code highlighters that can help this, this text appear more on page and be easier to read. But the example of markdown here shows you that it's just hash and then the text. And that's far easier to read. If you look through everything with the markdown compared to the HTML, I think most people could understand a markdown file, even if they don't know what these elements mean or are supposed to represent, it's something that you can read and understand. And that's the benefit of markdown. You get, uh, it's also very easy to create because you just have to do a hashtag here rather than writing out the brackets, putting the brackets at the start, putting the brackets at the end and things like that. So that's why Markdown came about, and that's why it's a common and useful way for writing. In fact, it's a very quick and efficient way to write things online, and it makes it really easy to understand, even if you don't see uh, the live preview. And then, of course, you can use tools that help you preview how it should look on a web page. And uh, that's where we come with Obsidian, because we have uh, we use Markdown, and you can see on this side I have the editor view, where it's raw, and then we have the preview view, which is how it will appear actually when live. And this is you know, pretty much how it looks on my publish page as well. But because uh, Obsidian does this sort of WYSIWYG editor, it also shows you how it will look um, even in the editor view. Now, of course, some themes don't do that. Some themes just uh, keep it as pure text, but that's a decision that you can have in the theme. So let's go through and start doing some of these exercises and, and turning this into a markdown. So first thing I want you to do is to make a top level heading. So this would be the biggest text, the main text on a web page. So all we have to do is do a hash and then a space. Space is important because otherwise it's, uh, it's a hashtag, it's tag. Uh, but with a space, this becomes a top level heading. And then for a second level heading, these should be like majority of your things in um, you know, subdomain, uh, subheadings. You just have two hashes. That's all you have to do to make it. And uh, just make sure there's a space between it. So when we come to the third level, can you guess how many hashes we need? That's right, three. So one, two, three, third level. Uh, and then for a fourth level, yep, it's gonna be, one, two, three, four, whoops. For a fifth level, I think you've guessed it already. Uh, whoops, for five, there we go. And then for a, whoops, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sixth level, we have it there. Now, as you can see, due to the theme, it's changed the style of how they look here. The sixth level actually doesn't look that great compared to the fifth level hmm, in the highlighted view. But there you go. You can see a preview of how each and every one looks. Now, the next one, I've given examples here uh, to show bold. We have two asterisks next to it and italics, we have one. This is the way I like to do it. Uh, I know that some people actually recommend instead of using uh, asterisks for Italian, italics, you use 
whatever this thing is called, small on the bottom <laughs> hyphens. I have no idea what those are. Those things, use those things. Uh, so that's alternative. And in fact, actually, if you have two of them, uh, it should be bold as well. So the difference is one or two. If you want to have the distinction between using asterisks versus the lower hyphens, then you can do that. If not, it's up to you. You can do this around one word or two or multiple or lines. So let's turn this text bold. Oh, and I forgot to mention in Obsidian, you can just do your standard command B to make the text bold and command I to make it italicized. So if you want, you can do that or you could type it out yourself and do one and two. So it's up to you how you do it. I think actually I can even, let's, uh, let's just, I think I can even, oh, whoops. Yeah, if you just type a single asterisk, that will go around it if you've highlighted the text as well. So there's a few options for that. And when it comes to quotes, the way to do a quote is using a chevron, uh, right? Space chevron like this, and this will turn it into a quote. And if I do a return, then I continue the quote and I can type more of the quote here. I can add the attribution, Mark Twain, let's say. Uh, there are many quotes, of course, that Mark Twain never said. If I press it twice, if I press return twice, then it's gone. So there you go, very easy way to do quotes. Uh, you can actually do quotes within a quote by having another one. So I could have like Michael Scott, whoops. Um, yeah. Michael Scott, Mark Twain, actually let's, let's do that like this. Let's have this here, keep you here and then yeah Michael Scott there we go oh whoops why is he not right hmm. there we go Michael Scott cool got it formatted correctly links so let's make this a link to a website what we do is I'm gonna highlight the whole thing I'm going to do a single square bracket. Then I'm going to do uh, curved brackets afterwards. And now I can enter a website. What website shall I have? Let's do the obsidian.md website, because that's one that we all know. So there we go. We've got a link. And as you can, in text, you can see it here. If I click on this, it will take me to the Obsidian website. Let's do, uh, let's add a footnote first of all. So a footnote, we just need to do like this, uh, one, oh no, hyphen one, close the square bracket, okay, and that. Now what we need to do is copy this, go down to the end, paste it, do the asterisks. Uh, I've done this wrong because my international keyboard hates me, that's why I forgot about this. I use the international keyboard because of typing in Polish occasionally. So there you go. So it needs to actually be, well, chevron thing. Now I can add a footnote. Uh, this is a footnote. A footnote. So now I've got my little footnote here. I can go to it. Now, if I want to do a footnote link, I just highlight it. I add another square bracket and this time I just a writer reference. So the easiest way probably is just to do number one, but I could include uh, text for that and then include it down there and uh, the link. Uh, let's have it go to my website. Okay, okay, there we go. So now this should also take me to my website. Yes, it does. But I think I need to have www or something. That. Cool. So we go. Uh, right. Now we're going to do an Obsidian style link. Uh, so I don't want to link the text there because that would be complicated. I'm going to link to my home note. So I did double square brackets and now I'm going to type home. 
and that will link me to my home notes. So that's the name of the home note. Uh, and you can see it's written as text, just home here. So what I'll do now is I'll cut you, I'll paste you there. So I've linked it in there. Now what, the reason, the way this one works, this is very obsidian centric way of doing it. You could just have, I could just take it away and then it will link to the home note. See, I've got my home note and it has the text, the description of the home note, the title of the note. If I want something which isn't the title of the note, then I need to do a, um, a line down and then insert the text that I want instead. So there I go, I have my link to the note home. I have that there. That's how I do that. Now let's add an image here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do an exclamation mark because this will embed a note rather than have it as a, uh, as a link. And I could do that here and it would embed all of my home notes, which is not a great idea. So then I'm just going to find a picture of me, Chris JPEG. Oh look, it's a picture of me in this room, in fact. So there we go, got an image embedded. And I can embed a note, let's have a short one. Uh, my mission, my big three? No, my, my mission, uh, my personal mission statement there. So I've got my, I've got my, uh, my personal mission statement that I'm working on there. So now an unordered list. This is so super easy. It's ridiculous. All you need to do is have a hyphen and a space. And that will work like that. And in fact, you can actually use different items. If you don't like hyphens, you could use an asterisk. Whoopsie. Could use an asterisk. You could use plus if you want. Again, it will just do it like that, but it will still appear as an ordered list in the same way. Uh, unordered list, sorry. Now let's say we want to make an ordered list, favorite pizza pot toppings. We just do the number one dot and a space, two dot space, three dot space. There we go, got an unordered list. Now for tasks, we need again, hyphen or similar, we do, uh, we do square brackets and then we have a description, uh, finish the markdown video. Okay, let's have a space in between that. And as you can see, it's become a clickable item. Let's add one more, uh, upload <laughs> markdown video. Oh, actually that's sad. Edit. <laughs> Markdown video. I left this open for you so that you can do your own ones. And now what will happen? Now I'm going to click one to finish it. I added an X there. So I can get rid of that. It will undo the change. Or I can add the X and now it's finished. So there you go. You can add an X in edit mode or you can tick it there and that will complete it. So this is a great way. I think you'll agree that you can you could just use this as a task list. People do use this as this task list, or you can turn it into that, make it that. Now tables are a pain. <laughs> tables are a real pain, but it's really amazing what you can do with them. So let's have uh, row one, row two, row three. Let's just stick with that for the moment. So now I've got my top row, but it's not done anything yet. So what I need to do is set these up, one, two, three, set that one up, one, two, three, that one up, one, two, three, that one up. There we go. Now you can see it's changed and it realizes that I'm making a table. And these are my header row. And then I can just do line, 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 copy. Why don't I actually add a space between each one? Now I've got another row, another row, another row. I could just add some information into rather than ones. Like I could have uh, X here. I could have uh, O here. Okay. 
So I go X here. Then I need to go ooh, O here. Yeah. Make sure there's a thing there. Let's tie that up a bit. Okay. So where do they go next? They go here. Oh, let's block that one off. Zero. Ah, oh, look at that. Nots and crosses. That is how a markdown table works, um, just using these dividers like that. It's not very clear in um, when you see it on the page unless you are using tabulation, separating things out properly. So an alternative is to use something like uh, tables generator, find these markdown table generators, generate how many rows you want, and then you can copy it to your clipboard and that gives you a bit more structure and a bit more of a correct layout. So there you go. These are the core markdown functions that you will use in Obsidian, especially the internal linking. That's a really useful one there. Um, there are some more power features that can allow you to do things such as uh, flowcharts in Obsidian. And if you've enjoyed this one and leave a comment and, and like it, then I'll make a video on that with some of the more advanced markdown features. But I hope this has been useful for you. And uh, yeah, subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out the next Obsidian Markdown video, and I will see you in the next one.